So we've talked a lot about what your agent can do, what your buyer's agent can do to get your offer accepted. But let's talk about what your lender can do to get your offer accepted. And hopefully your lender is willing to do some, if not all of these things. I'm Shahida Hill, getting you over the hill to home ownership to help you confidently buy your first home. All right, so we're gonna pick on the lenders a little bit. But number one, the lender is willing to call the listing agent on your behalf. They're gonna call the listing agent to reassure them that you are a good financial risk and you can close and hopefully close quickly. They're also going to be available on the weekends because primarily when you put in an offer, it's going to be on a Saturday or a Sunday. That's when the majority of people are looking for homes. If your lender is nine to five, you can't reach them on a Saturday, Saturday or a Sunday, that might be a problem if the seller or the listing agent is trying to verify your financing. Most good listing agents will call the lender to verify your financing, regardless of what your, your pre-approval offers pre-approval letter states. So some of them will wait till Monday to make that decision because they know offices open on Monday. Some of them won't. They want to be able to get your lender on the phone on Saturday, Saturday or Sunday. A lot of times what some agents do, buyers agents, they will copy the they will copy the lender on the email when they email the offer over, they will copy the the lender on that email so they're aware that you sent that that you sent an offer and hopefully if they can't call they'll send a follow-up email to go with your email and say hey i'm the the lender for blah 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 if you have any questions they're good to go if you have any questions about their financing you can reach me here at the bare bare minimum your lender should be doing this for you number two your lender should have access to a credit simulator. If your credit is kind of on the borderline of what you need to qualify, your lender should have a credit simulator that they let you use, that they put your information in, they have access to it. They can put your information in and say, if you do this, this, and this with your credit, your credit score will probably be where you need it to be to qualify for financing. Now, most, if not all, I'm not sure, of lenders, big lenders have access to credit simulators. Whether they share this with you is something entirely different. But I've seen lenders give my clients, oh, if you need, you pay off this or pay your debt down to this, your, your credit score should increase 10 points and then come back to us, that sort of thing. You wanna make sure that they at least, if you have some credit issues, that they have access to a credit simulator that basically tells you what you need to do to get your credit where you need to be to qualify. So I think, again, that they at least tell you or give you some guidance using their simulators. Like there's a report that they can print out, some lenders, maybe not all, this is something you have to ask, but they can give you a report and they'll print it out and say, do this and this is expected to happen. And again, it's a simulator. It's not 100%, but they are usually very detailed. They'll tell you what account needs to, you need to pay off. They'll tell you what account you need to pay down and what the, the impact of doing that should be. So if you needed to qualify, if you needed 20 more points on your credit, and they'll tell you how long, like they'll say, if you do this and this, your credit should be where it needs to be within two months or three months. They should be giving you at least access or let you know that if you did not qualify or if you didn't qualify for as much, what you can do to make that happen. All right, number three, they have to be able to close you in 30 days or less. This is a very competitive market and most sellers do not want to wait past 30 days for their home to close. I've had clients who were pre-approved with banks and that sort of thing say, well, I'm not, we're not even gonna take your contract if it says it's gonna close less than 45 days. And that's putting their client at a disadvantage, especially in a multiple offer situation where people are closing in 14 days, in 20 days, 30 days at the maximum, and you have a contract or an offer that the lender will not even look at if it doesn't have at least 45 days on it. That's a major problem. You need to make sure your lender can close you, especially in this environment, that they can close you in 30 days or less. 
And if this is your first time here, please like and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. And I'm also going to give you some bonuses. If you watch to this point, I'm going to tell you some red flags that you don't want your lender to do. Number four, they will take you through underwriting prior to going under contract. And this is kind of a tricky one because if they're employees of a larger company, think of a lender as almost a salesperson. They may not control whether they can put you through underwriting ahead of time. It may be a company policy. But let me tell you this. There are a lot of real estate agents that will not even work with lenders that will not take their clients, especially in this market, through underwriting first. You want at least one lender that's willing to take you through underwriting prior. So then instead of waiting for you to get through underwriting to approve your loan, really they're waiting for you to get under contract, for the title for that property to be reviewed, and for the appraisal to be done. Once they have the title and the appraisal, there's not much to do because they've done all of that preliminary underwriting ahead of time. So this could be a game changer when you're in a competitive environment that you don't have, you don't have the risk of the seller having to wait until you get through underwriting. And the risk there is you go through underwriting and you're not approved and sellers don't like uncertainty. They like the, cert the certainty of somebody who says, oh, there's no finance contingency. There's no contingency. So that puts the, that offer at a higher level than yours. Okay. And I said, I would give you two bonuses. These are two that I think you should be mindful of. These are red flags if your lender is talking about this. One is, say you're only qualified for FHA. And so they tell you, they're going to give you a conventional um, pre-approval. And then once you go under contract, they'll switch you over to FHA. Depending on your state and how your contracts are written, this could be a problem. Like in Georgia, the seller has to agree to switch financing. So you can't just say, oh, I, I was going to do conventional. Now I'm going to do FHA. The seller has to agree that they'll take a different finance type depending on the contract. Okay. And they could, if they say no, they could terminate that agreement with you and relist their property with someone else. So you want to talk to your lender about that. You want to talk to your agent about that. So they're not at, you're not at risk of potentially losing a deal. It does happen. Unfortunately, it does actually work because sometimes the you've got gone the seller is so um, ready to move and you tell them or the lender tells them at the last minute you're switching financing and then they don't want to terminate. So just know that this could be highly unethical and it could be a problem. Number two your lender telling you that your agent can get you closing costs. Now, depending on your market and depending on the environment, it's, there are competitive situations and your agent may not be able to get you closing costs if they want you to have a competitive offer. If your lender tells you, um, oh, your agent can get you some closing costs, just make sure they get you at least $3,000 in closing costs. And you, you assume, because you see the loan estimate, that this is possible in this market, that your, your agent can get you closing costs in a multiple offer situation. That's not always going to be the case. And then you will be unprepared with the amount of money that you need to close the deal. So you want to make sure that you have all of your closing costs saved if you get into a situation where closing costs are going to be offered or negotiated by the seller then you'll have more money at closing for yourself. But don't assume in this seller's market that the seller is going to be paying closing costs. If your lender tells you that, tell them on average in this market, in your market, how many people percentage-wise are getting their closing costs covered either in part or 100% by the seller. Because let me tell you, in our market, and I'm in Atlanta, it's very low, you know, especially in these multiple offer situations, depending on price point, most people are not getting their closing costs paid. You want to make sure that your lender is helping you get your offer accepted. I'm Shahida Hill. Please like and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week.